Hi everyone, this is Maths World UK. I'm James Grime and today I'm speaking with James Tanton. James Tanton is a mathematician who's interested in maths at all levels. He's worked at universities, he's worked in high schools, and now he's kind of a, an ambassador for maths, promoting maths around the world. And today, James has brought in a number fact for us to try out. He calls it freaky fractions. So if you're happy with how to add and multiply fractions, you should be okay. So James is asking you to try out this fact at home, experiment with it. And then of course, the big question is, why is this true? Now, James actually has a whole bunch of online projects for you to check out. I'm gonna save all the promotion to the end of the video. But the one thing I really like about James is how clear his explanations are. Cut through the clutter is what I say. <laughs> Just cut through the clutter because math can shine unto itself. It is a beautiful subject that can shine and speak for itself. It doesn't need, you know, the periphery of jargon and, and bells and whistles and gimmicks and all the rest. Just let the math speak for itself. Do you think that maths has a lot of jargon and kind of a barrier to, for people getting into it? I think people's experience of mathematics is usually through school mathematics, which is full of jargon and barriers. I think, I think the curriculum has actually been... Um, in this attempt to help people over the decades and centuries to break things into small and smaller pieces, we are left with only the, the small little granular size of pieces and we lose sight of the story, the human story at all. And often the jargon, the words become more important than the concepts and we lose sight of all that. I think it's very hard to make uh, mathematics feel accessible and real and, well, I keep using the word human, I'm going to use it yet again, and human. So what have you brought in to share us today? All right, so I'm just going to play a game. I'm just doing I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just doing it because it's just something compelled me to do this. Right now, I have a pile of nine pebbles. Hopefully, I can count correctly. That's always a challenge for me. Nine, yes, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep splitting this pile of nine pebbles into two piles. For example, I'm going to do a pile of four and a pile of five right there. But on my piece of paper, for mysterious reasons, I feel like writing the fraction one fourth and one fifth, and I'm going to add them together. Uh, oh, this is the hard part. Uh, that's uh, five twentieths plus four twentieths. I guess that makes nine twentieths. Nine twentieths. All right, and now I'm going to split them again. Maybe I'll split the four into a two piles of a two and a two. So I'll write on my paper one tooth plus one tooth, which makes one. Um, maybe I'll split the five into, say, two and three. Uh, one tooth plus one three equals, there's another hard one. Uh, that's what's three six plus two, that's five six, I believe. Uh oh, arithmetic's not my forte. Uh, split the two into one and one. One one plus one one plus two. Split the two into one and one. One one plus one and one is two. Split the two into one and one. One one plus one one is two. Oh, three. Now something interesting. Uh, one and two, maybe. One one plus one tooth is three halves. And final two, one one plus one one is another two. All right, so I've split my pile of nine. Well, can you see that? Into now nine single piles of one. And I've collected all these fractions along the way. Now, I'm going to do something mysterious with those fractions. I'm going to multiply them together because I am in that mood. Nine twentieths times one times five six times two times two times two times three tooths times two. I think I've got all of them. I hope I did that correctly. All right, there's a beastly long fraction to multiply together. Um, oh, I look at that and say, okay, uh, 20 and a five and a two and a two. That's a five times, that's 20 at the top, so that cancels out. That's nice. It's a little bit simpler. Uh, six, three and six is three times two. That cancels out. Uh, two and a two on the top and there. I've got everything's gone from the bottom, so I've got something over one. Nine times one on the top. This equals the whole number nine, which happens to be the number of pebbles I started with. Okay, okay. I feel compelled to do it again. If you've got the patience, I'm going to do it again. But this time I'm going to make different choices along the way. I'll make different choices along the way. In fact, I won't draw the pebbles. I'm going to just draw a diagram. For example, what if I did nine into, say, three and six this time? Hope it's okay for me to write numbers. So one third plus one six is, oh gosh, uh, two six plus one six is three six. That's one half. Uh, maybe I'll split the three into a two and a one. One half plus one one is three halves. Uh, the two can go to one and a one. One plus one is two. One one plus one one. Um, two and four maybe. That sounds fun. Uh, one half plus one quarter is three quarters. Uh, two, one and one. One one plus one one is one. Uh, whoop, is two. Don't catch me, I make mistakes. Uh, one and three, uh, one once plus one third is uh, four thirds, uh, three and one, okay, I'll make, oh, sorry, make it two and one is one half plus one over one, one is uh, three halves, and finally one one, a little bit tedious, but I'm so excited about what I'm, what's happening, because I have a feeling if I multiply those fractions together, you can probably guess what's going to happen, I'll get nine, I don't know, but let's find out, one half times three halves times two 
times three fourths times two times four thirds times three tooths times two. I think I got them all. Hope they did. Okay. Ooh, is that nine? Okay, let's find out. Uh, two, two on the bottom and two, two on the top. Cancel out. Lovely. A four on the bottom and, uh, and uh, three twos. Ooh, a four, and a four on the top. There we go. They cancel out. Uh, three on the bottom, a three on the bottom, a two on the bottom, a two on the top. Sorry, I say bottom and top. And what am I left with? Uh, nothing on the bottom. Uh, one, three, and three multiplied together to make the whole number nine. Activity try at home. Take nine objects, nine pebbles, nine coins, nine zucchini, whatever you have. Split them in a completely different way. Do you also get nine when you do this weird freaky fraction thing? That's question number one. And you probably guess how I've set this up. Probably yes, because I did it two ways and I did not memorize my trees. So yes, I bet you get nine every time, but try it out for yourself. And then I'm wondering, is there anything special about the number nine? Why not play with eight or play with 10 or play with 400, whatever you like. Does that also give the same uh, freaky fraction product as you play along? So I will reveal all the magic to this, but I'm just going to show you one other thing. This is, if you actually, you may have seen this puzzle before, that's why it's worth me mentioning. This is the classic one that's been around at least for decades. I actually don't know the origin of it, um, but I'd be curious. This time we'll play the same game. Split it any way you like. Maybe I'll do two and seven, like I said before this time. But this time, just write down the numbers two and seven and do that product, 14. And then maybe split into the seven and say three and four. Three times four is 12. Uh, split the three into say one and two, got a lot of choice there. One times two is two. Uh, the two into one and one, one times one is one. Uh, keep splitting. The four, maybe I'll go to two and two. Two times two is four. Or oh, now I've got a one and a one, a one and a one, a one and a one. I'm getting a bit speedier now. One times one is one. One times one is one. One times one is one. I think I did that correctly. That was uh, all of them. And this time, add up these numbers. Oh gosh, arithmetic. I'm going to fail. I know I'm going to fail. 28, 30, uh, no, 26. I've already failed. 28, uh, 29, 9, 33, plus 3, 36. 36. And I bet if you did this on your own with nine pebbles and made a different choice of splitting along the way, you will get 36. Each and every time you try it, you will get 36. Try with a different number of pebbles and you'll get a different number, but I'm wondering now what that different number would be and what its relationship is to 36. Or if you try it with seven pebbles or try it with six, or in fact, go all the way down to two pebbles. Well, actually there's not much to do there. One times one. That's it. You have a product of one, sums up to one. The magic number for two pebbles is one. The magic number for nine pebbles is 36. So here's another exploration to try at hand at home. Try with different number of pebbles with this product version before you get to the crazy ones and see if you can make sense of what numbers seem to be coming up in their own right. And then the real deep question is, why do you keep getting the same number each time for beginning counter pebbles? And that is the mystery for today. So it's really all about why. So you play with them, check that everything I'm doing with crazy fractions gives you the same answer every single time. But then the real question is, but why are they the same number every single time? Here, here is my, is a website on my page. You can see it's, oh, it's very friendly. Yes, jamestan.com slash question mark P equals 2350. Just remember that. I'm sure it's easy to remember. But here's the thing. I, I put here again, I make, I'm just so obsessed with these fractions and crazy ones. I made little videos just before this call for me just explaining to the world. So you watch the videos again, um, that's great. But here is a PDF, pile splitting, where I actually explain everything I did much more betterly and, and, and slowly than I just did now for, you, for everyone. But feel free to go to that PDF and download it and read it at your leisure and explain everything very carefully and show you exactly how my brain works. Remember, I'm slow, this not happened overnight. Mathematicians like me are just ridiculously slow beasts. Um, and then just sit with it, sit with it, and then see what brilliant things your brains might come up with. Come up with your own version and then freak me out. Let me know what you've come up with because I think this is just magical. I'm actually kind of tickled by all this. And James, is there anything else that you want to plug or think we should uh, check out before you go? Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I, do you know what? There's a wonderful movement here in the US of just bringing joyful maths to the world. So I might actually say, check out the mathcommunities.org page. This is an organization, the American Institute of Mathematics based in San Jose, California, which is just trying to collate all the wonderful um, programs going on, like this one that you can tap into and, and watch a, 
a great session on interactive mathematics or just electron mathematics. That's all free to the world. They're actually doing a fabulous job collating it all. So anything I do goes up there for sure. Uh, but there are people doing fabulous things all across this nation. But why not be this globe? I like to think globally, as you will know. So mathcommunities.org is worth checking out. See what's happening on the US. And let's make a UK movement as well for this. Hey, we're back and I want to say thanks to James again. He has a whole bunch of online resources that you might want to check out. Uh, first of all, there's his YouTube channel and his website where you'll find the Freaky Fractions. We'll put all the links to this in the description. He also mentioned mathscommunities.org, which is again a whole bunch of online lectures and workshops for all ages. You might want to have a look at that. And also I want to mention the Global Maths Project, which in part is about uh, one week in October where classrooms all around the world are doing the same activity and talking about it online. But it isn't just one week in October. This is something that you can do all year round and the resources are there and free for you to use. So check out all those websites. And for now, I'll say stay curious and I'll see you next time.